you being as welcome. Uh, my name is Will Palestis. I'm the Chief of Administration and Public Affairs for the Buffalo Public Schools. And tonight we want to give you an update on uh, three different funding streams for the Buffalo Public Schools, our foundation aid plan, our federal stimulus or ARP ESSER uh, stream, and then also another grant stream known as the Contract for Excellence. I'll be introducing Jeffrey Pritchard, our Chief Financial Officer, in just a moment. When he's concluded, uh, he will be then joined by his Deputy Chief Financial Officer, Mr. Jim Barnes. They will take you through some updates. At that conclusion, uh, Jamie uh, Cohen will be joining us to facilitate the dialogue and any questions or feedback that you may have uh, regarding any of these funding streams. So uh, without any further delay, let me turn this over to our Chief Financial Officer, Mr. Jeffrey Pritchard. Thank you. I'm the Chief Financial Officer for the City School District. And uh, as you can see on the presentation, there are two, um, two topics that I'll discuss briefly here um, in presentation format, um, and then we can go over any questions at the end. Um, yeah, so the first one is foundation aid. So with the adoption of the 21-22, so that was actually two years ago, state budget, the legislator, legislature, and the governor committed to fully funding foundation aid by the 23-24 fiscal year. Um, and previously, there was a large gap between what we were paid in foundation aid and what was calculated for foundation aid. So this legislation actually is going to close that over a period of three years. Now, certain school districts, uh, including Buffalo, are required to outline the budgetary uses of these annual foundation aid uh, throughout this phasing period. So, um, and then just to give everyone another kind of refresher what foundation aid is, foundation aid is the largest general fund revenue at 620.4 million, and it's 61% of the revenues in our general fund budget. So this funds core instructional and operational costs for the district. Um, it's not a grant, and it's not part of any ARP ESSER funding. So the foundation aid, again, is primarily our general fund, that's our largest general fund revenue source. Um, the foundation aid growth that is subject to the foundation aid plan is $34,974,010, and it's, it's a 6% increase in 22-23. Um, next slide, please. So what is the plan this year? Now, we're, we're really keeping this very simple because in our general fund budget, we're, we're largely doing a maintenance of, of effort budget, and we also have uh, mandated certain mandated cost increases. So first one is charter school tuition expense. Um, charter school pupils are expected to increase by 1,139 pupils. That's a lot. Um, up uh, to uh, 10,839 in the 22-23 year. Um, and that's from 9,700 in the, at the beginning of the 21-22 year. So that cost increase is $18,985,513. So we are essentially using the increase in foundation aid to fund this mandated cost increase of charter school tuition. So that's the first and largest portion of our foundation aid plan. Uh, second item, and this is new, um, contingency for labor contract settlement. Um, to ensure that we have funds available for to settle labor contracts, and also to make sure that we, in our long-term plan, we have a solvent plan. The superintendent this year included an amount in the 22-23 general fund budget and again, she plans to continue to include that for the settlement of outstanding labor contracts. So these funds will be used to settle contracts that are outstanding, meaning they've expired, and our employees that are working very hard are, are, are uh, negotiating with us for uh, salary increases and, and other adjustments. So 
that in the budget we have a 26.2 million dollar amount that is set aside for the, the settlements. Um, and in the foundation aid plan, uh, 15,988,497,000 is what we have covered with that. Um, and then at the very bottom of this page, I just have a summary of, of the change in the original budget uh, in 22-23 versus 21-22, showing the overall increase, and then the increase in the foundation aid plan. So again, the charter school tuition is actually increasing to 154.6 million from 135.7. That's an increase of a little under 19 million. All of that will be funded through foundation aid. Um, and then the contingency for labor contract settlement is 26.2 million, and we'll be utilizing 15.988 million in foundation aid to cover that. So that essentially is our foundation aid plan. Um, next slide, please. So we also have now, um, I'm pivoting into the ARP ESSER plan. So the districts through uh, last, last spring and into last summer and into the fall had done many presentations in developing the ARP ESSER plan. This is a $289.6 million in federal funding that will be utilized over 21-22 fiscal year, 22-23 in 23-24, so a three fiscal year plan that on average is a little less than $100 million a year, and it's being used for supplemental spending um, across the district, but largely in our uh, instruction and student supports, uh, technology, um, and, and so forth. As part of uh, required annual reporting, um, we also have to provide any adjustments to the ARP ESSER plan um, a, as they are at this point. This first page that I have here is a presentation that just shows the 21-22 budget um, and for by functional category and also the expenses that have been uh, that have been charged to the accounts through uh, June. And we still have um, we still have two more months to close out the years. Um, we also have encumbrances and then a remaining balance. So essentially, the budget is approximately 122.6 million. Uh, expenses are 33.2 million. Encumbrances 18.2, and remaining funds of 71.3 in this first fiscal year. Um, and I know it's probably difficult to see for anyone that's watching along, but the, the, these presentations will be made available after if you don't have them. And there are copies here for anyone in the auditorium. Um, so that, this is essentially just a recap of what, what was in the plan for the current year. And all of this has already been approved by the state. Um, and those state plans, which um, you know, I have a couple of copies here, um, are FS10s that are approved by New York State um, and those are posted to our website. So what we're trying to do here is just show a quick summary of where we are uh, um, in spending so far. Um, I'll go to the next slide. And I have uh, three slides remaining. And of these three slides, it is outlining proposed changes, amendments to the ARPESSER plan that we anticipate submitting to New York State um, for, for adjustments to, to the overall FS10 budget. Um, and these items are largely gonna be paid for by, by unspent dollars in, in the first year. Um, and uh, you know, they encompass changes and adjustments and recommendations that have been uh, uncovered um, through essentially the first year of the spending um, as we learn more and we, we identify more areas of need. Um, it's a pretty comprehensive list and I'll kind of go through some of the numbers at a, at a high level of, of what they are. These, these are items that have been tentatively approved by the superintendent for submission to, um, to New York State Education Department um, for again, for uh, an amendment in the ARPESA plan. Um, Largest one on this list is actually additional funds for district-wide 
the district-wide air handling unit project. Um, that project initially was started out at about 10 million. Um, we believe based on analysis of needs in our schools that an, an additional 15 million, up to an additional 15 million may be necessary. Um, there is also a $5 million item for the completion of the All High Stadium Phase 3. That's site improvements um, to, to the stadium, the grounds and lighting. Um, there are also 40 security officers um, to uh, increase the security in our schools. That will cost about 3.2 million in, in this next fiscal year. Um, after school bus and fuel costs, um, as everyone knows, fuel, uh, fuel costs are, are rising, um, 3.1 million. Um, there's a project to digitize special education records. So these, these, these records that are in paper right now can be converted into an electronic format, about 2 million. Um, social emotional training for employees, uh, 1.1 million. Um, there was a request to, to do playground upgrades at many of our schools that need them, another million, um, and, and so on uh, down the line. There are three pages of these, um, of, of these particular items. Um, I'm going to, you know, I'm, 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 I'm not going to read all the items that are on here. Um, I think it's probably, you know, we have the presentation shared and it can be um, shared widely uh, through the public. Um, we're hoping that we can get some questions and feedback um, early this week. So at this point, I will uh, will conclude the presentation um, and ask for questions. Yeah. I want to thank you, especially those are, uh, viewers who are in person, as well as those who are watching this tonight from home. Um, those of you who are watching from home, we want to make sure you are participating, and we want to hear your comments, questions, and feedback as well. So there is a web uh, email address we have set up that you can participate, and we will read your comments live. So you can email ARP, stands for American Rescue Plan, ARP at buffaloschools.org. And we will see your comments, your questions about tonight's presentation. Uh, we are working on getting the comment feed working as well as an alternate method for you to participate. But we want comments from our audience, as well as those of you at home. If you have any questions about Contract for Excellence, about American Rescue Plan, or about Foundation Aid, now is your time. We want your feedback, ideas, and we want to make sure your questions are answered. Thank you. I'd also like to introduce my colleague, our deputy CFO, Jim Barnes. Uh, good evening. Uh, I'm here tonight to talk about the contract for excellence funding for the 22-23 school year. Uh, it's an annual presentation we give on this funding source. Uh, thank you. So what is the contract for excellence? The contract for excellence was first established by state legislation in 2007, 2008, along with the state budget process. The intent of the legislation is to improve student achievement and predominantly benefit students with the greatest educational needs and students in low performing schools. A technical point, CPRI is not a grant Instead, CPRI is a set of restrictions placed on a portion of our district's foundation aid. This is commonly referred to as a set-aside, and it's within the district's general operating budget. What can the contract for excellence fund? Programs and activities that are implemented as part of the CPRI must be aligned with the school's achievement needs. Oh, we're a little behind in our slides. Sorry about that. No, it's good. So what can the contract for excellence fund? Programs and activities that are implemented as part of the 
Super E funding must be aligned with the school's achievement needs and have the greatest likelihood of positively impacting student achievement. District must target the funds to students with the greatest educational needs, students with disabilities, students with limited English proficiency, English language learners, students living in poverty, and students with low academic achievement. The CPRE funding and the programs that it funds must give priority to schools serving concentrations of such students. Next slide, please. So what are the requirements for the contract for excellence? Big five city school districts, which Buffalo is one of, must allocate at least 75% of the funds to benefit students having the greatest educational needs as measured against total enrollment, poverty, disability, limited English proficiency and low student performance. What are the uses for contract for excellence? The law specifies six categories of allowable programs and activities. Class size reduction, increased time on task, teacher and principal quality initiatives, middle and high school restructuring, full day pre-K and kindergarten, and model programs for English language learners. I just have a couple of slides left and they're all focused on now on explaining the specific items that c e is funding in our 22-23 budget. The total amount of c e funding is $13.6 million. Buffalo during its Buffalo budget process allocates these funds to schools by two methods, centrally allocated programs and flexible funds based upon student enrollment. And that is done through what's called our school-based budget process. So a quick overview of our centrally allocated programs, uh, reduced class size teachers, 30 reduced class size teachers for a cost of 2.3 million. The second item is model programs for ELL students. What we fund here is 0.2 ESL teachers, 1.5 cultural resource specialists, three ELL aides, one assistant, six registration cultural aides, and one coordinator. Uh, these monies are put into the multilingual department and they then review the needs of the specific students in schools and want to allocate these resources out. To finish up the centrally allocated budget, 19 social workers. Oh, I'm sorry, go to the next slide, please. So to finish up on the centrally allocated portion of the 22-23 budget, uh, c for e funds 19 social workers, 29.5 guidance counselors. Again, the guidance and special ed departments will allocate out these resources uh, based upon the needs of individual students or schools in conjunction with other funding sources. Uh, this year, 22-23, we're also funding 5.3 music teachers. And for the Accelerated Credit Recovery Program, uh, we're funding $80,000 in software expenditures. So the second method for allocating out the 13.6 million in c e fund is called our flexible program. And that's done through uh, the district school-based budget process. Uh, specific school choices for 22-23 were submitted during the school-based budget process and reviewed with their school-based management teams. The school-based budget process, during that process, 29.75 FTEs Teachers, aides and assistants, and guidance counselors were funded. And then they also chose about $160,000 in non-staff expenditures. So that wraps up the review of what the C4E program is and the 22-23 budget. So there's some contact information on the last page. And I thank you for your time. Um, Mr. Rivera? Oh, Mr. Rivera, sorry, Ryan, how are you? <laughs> um, 
I just have a question. It's, it's probably not a budget question. It's more a programmatic question. But okay. with the reduced class size strategies for 2.2 million, what are the metrics that are going to be attached to measuring if that actually was successful or not? Um, I think that I'm not sure if either of you might see the question. The question was specific to um, reduced class size and the new expenditures that are going to be allocated to make class sizes smaller in the district. Um, and that is more of a program question because the question is, has to do with how will we assess whether or not that new strategy was effective. And I think that we're looking at that point of academic progress. I'm not sure if you have a different answer. Or... I mean, the, the short answer is it's all of the metrics that go into determining the school designation. We want to make sure that something like class size reduction is an investment that keeps a school in good standing. If it is a school that needs improvement or under corrective action or under receivership, we want it to result in that school coming out of that designation. So really, we, we use the accountability system that the State Education Department has overlaid on all public school districts to determine the effectiveness of investment like that. Okay, thank you, Dr. Cressy. To summarize for our Apple viewers as well, um, we are looking at our state designation. For example, a school that is struggling, is it making it to academic progress so that it becomes a school of good standing? We're making, looking at the state designated, um, basically the metrics to make sure that we are showing growth for all of our subgroups and hopefully reduce class size will get us there. Okay. I just to add one more comment. Each year, every school has academic targets that are set based on their performance from the previous year. So those targets, in a sense, are the roadmap for how we're doing along that path towards being a school of good standing. Thank you. Okay. Um, from our at home viewers, we do have a question. Um, for foundation aid and for contract for excellence, um, have you guys answer those? Uh, the question is, what are the biggest and notable changes of, um, for this budget compared to the last one? What are the highlights? Uh, I can answer on this seat for okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, Jim Barnes again. I'm, I'm going to answer your question on the changes in the C4E budget. Uh, the largest, it, it's pretty stable budget year over year. The largest change is in some of the centrally allocated programs, supplemental arts and music programs. Uh, the schools in the departments have their choice to pick arts or music. This year, they picked music programs. Last year, they funded arts programs. So that's the difference. Now, it sh I should clearly note that this is not the only funding source for either arts or music. So it does not mean that arts was cut and music was increased. It simply means C4E funded music this year, whereas it funded arts last year. But there was no cut in arts programs or arts teachers. They were simply funded by other sources. Hello, this is uh, Jeff Pritchard uh, again, the CFO for the district. Um, relative to foundation aid and the overall general fund budget, um, as we kind of pointed out in the foundation aid plan, charter school tuition was the largest overall increase, uh, original budget to original budget, of about 19 million. Um, and then that 26.2 million contingency related to the settlement of outstanding labor contracts. Um, so th those are really the two biggest items in the budget, largely funded with the foundation aid increases. Um, the, other, the other large, a uh, couple other changes in the budget related to utilities, um, because utility costs are up, there was about a $3.7 million increase in utilities. Um, and uh, um, some of the after school programming in the budget was uh, shifted into the ARP plan, um, and that was a small reduction in, in the overall general fund budget. But, but largely, the general fund budget was, a, again, a maintenance of effort that we maintained what was in there in the prior year and utilized the other, other funding, our BESSER and, and grants and so forth for supplemental, for supplemental spending. And then even within the general fund, schools make some different choices within their school-based budgets as well. So sometimes there's fluctuations, some things go a little bit up or down based on school choices. Uh, but that, that's primarily um, you know, the, the, the change in the budget. Thank you.
at home, you should also see up here, there are um, a couple email addresses I want you to pay attention to. Much of this information can be found on our website. And as I mentioned before, if there are questions you have about tonight's presentation, you will get a response. I want you to email ARP at buffaloschools.org if it has to do with ARP or foundation aid. And there's even a separate email specific to Contract for Excellence up on our screen. So it's contract the number four, excellence, at buffaloschools.org. So we want your comments, we want your suggestions, and we want to keep those coming in. Even after this meeting has ended, it's okay if you're watching a recording of this. You know, we have a number of colleagues monitoring this email account. So I really want you to, if you have a question, you have an idea, you think, let's say, hey, this is great, I'm happy to see that you're doing our arts and music, for example, or whatever it might be. Keep it coming in, keep the ideas coming in. We want those suggestions um, to continue. Um, whether it is about any of the funding sources addressed tonight. And as my colleagues have said, this is, these are just some of the many funding sources that go and fund the, the, you know, the vast number of initiatives here at Buffalo Schools. So not one particular funding source funds everything. It's a puzzle of many different pieces put together that fund the entire thing as a whole. But keep them coming in. I am monitoring the account as we speak. So I want to, you know, continue that as best we can. Is there anything else, gentlemen? That's it? Okay. I'm going to close out tonight's meeting, though. Thank you very much for our in-person audience. You have been fantastic. <laughs> and great questions and great dialogue. And for those of you who are at home, keep those questions coming in. That was a great question, asking the difference from one year to the next. And we are going to keep doing that. I will make sure I am going to be the person who takes that question. I will make sure any questions coming in go to the correct source and that you will get a response. So again, thank you for joining us in this dream. This dream.